Hey guys, Frozen Nexus here, and today I'm going to talk about how to counter Pyre launchers. Now, I'm just talking about it, I'm not demonstrating it, because one, I don't have a Pyre launcher to demonstrate shit with, and two, even if I did, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about are going to be nearly impossible to demonstrate just because they require, uh, what are they called, um, the turrets and drones. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing, and probably the most obvious, and I'm sure you all know about it, is just simply you using cover. Now, the issue with this is, if you're behind cover, you get locked on, they fire the missiles, a lot of it depends on elevation. If they were above you, the missiles might still be able to clear your cover and still come down on you, which is just, like, terrible. That would be really unfortunate. But most of the time, and I say most of the time, because that's very, that's a very rare situation that that'll happen. But, yeah, most of the time, you'll be fine. Uh, if you're behind cover, you'll be good. Uh, but if you're, if they're really high elevation, like, I see this happen sometimes on bridge maps, where the other player is on top of one of the hills, and then another player is just trying to hide behind a, you know, small mountain. The missile will go over the cover and straight down onto you which is very unfortunate. Sorry about that, had a weird hiccup there, and edit that out. But uh, the next thing I want to talk about is armor. And I don't mean just throwing armor all over your vehicle, I mean spaced armor. If you've ever seen someone with like an armored skirt, that's what I'm talking about. Armor that's out about a few inches, few feet. That way it will prevent your vehicle from ever, you know, like, if it... Okay, I don't know how to explain this great but if you shoot say the back right of my vehicle you see how I have two fenders there if you hit that with a cannon both fenders will be damaged but if I moved the fenders out and spaced them apart and say I took like a grill extended it lengthwise and put it between the fenders then whenever a missile would hit that or a cannon shot it would not break my grill or, well, it would break the grill probably, but it would not break both fenders, is what I should say. This guy is actually a perfect example of space armor. Do you see how that how that's done? He's using grills to extend out fan sides, so the first shot that hits his tires will not actually hit his tires. It's a great method to use for countering Pyre launchers because... You know, they obviously target you, and once they break off on you, uh, then you know where they are, really. So, it's really helpful, and it's really, uh, it's really good against, actually, all kinds of, like, enemy vehicles. There's no, like, downside to having spaced armor, to be honest. Like, nothing really could go bad from having spaced armor. So, you know, I would try and keep that in mind. However, I, it is impossible to place uh, spaced armor on every vehicle you ever design, obviously. That would just be, you know, getting ridiculous. So, just try your best, though, is what I'm trying to say there. Because it will help you out a lot in the long run. The next thing I want to talk about is probably the one you have uh, little, uh, little knowledge about. And <clears throat> that is turrets. Now... I can't get into too much about how this works. Uh, I believe he's talking about deployable turrets and drones. So, what he means is, and I got this information from Thyper, he's a GM. Uh, you might see him around in the general chat. I talked to him on r slash crossout for a bit during the AMA. But, the drones, as well as the turrets, the deployable ones, will cause the Pyre launchers to go after what your drone or your turret first. They are more interested in your drone or turret than they actually are you. They will redirect their attention at your drone or if you place down a turret and they'll leave you completely alone, which a lot of people don't know and a lot of people should know, which is quite awesome, you know? It's a really good thing to have, you know, if you're able to just completely get the enemy to not target you or well the lot of pyre launchers to just completely not target you and sorry about that my computer decided I need to know about an update uh, as usual it's probably the same update I've been complaining about for three weeks now I just refuse to update my computer 
But yeah, um, I'll just edit that quick short bit out. Anyway, the biggest uh, the biggest issue with that though is that getting a drone or a turret is rel is relatively easy. They're uh, they're a bit later game to to say the least. So. I wouldn't really expect it to be something you're going to get immediately, but it is something you can work towards, and they, and even past just, you know, using them to, uh, knock away fiery launchers, they are extremely useful, especially missile turrets, because guess what, they're homing missiles. Yep, that's right, you can get a turret that has homing missiles. It's ridiculous, I don't understand why that's a thing, but it is. That is just insane. I, I don't know. But they are going to be getting... Uh, all homing missiles are going to be getting a nerf here pretty soon. But the next and final thing is tower builds. And I actually made a video on this. The way this works is Pyre launchers target the middle of your vehicle. There were, well, how I found it out is I'm working on an add-on for the game to help explain some of the hidden statistics, as well as allow you to use custom crosshairs, but, uh, the, I was looking at the Pyre launchers, and obviously, I quickly noticed that when they pick their target on the vehicle, they just take 50% of the Y axis and then just shoot at that. That's their target, that's what they want to blow up. So if you just build a giant tower on the back of your vehicle, they'll target the middle of the tower rather than have them target your cabin, which is generally what the middle of most people's vehicles are. So keep that in mind. If you want to build a Pyre proof vehicle, Build it up pretty high and keep your cabin low. That will actually really help you out. You probably won't even get hit by one. Or, well, if you do, it will go after the tower. The other thing that's great about this is because when they're targeting the tower part of your vehicle, it's pretty awesome because, well, they can't really do much against it. Uh, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that the fiery launcher doesn't exactly have a great they do have a great turn radius, but when you're targeting such a slim and tiny target to begin with, it's going to have a lot of trouble keeping uh, keeping up with the tracking of this very tiny tower you have. So say, you know, you take straight pipes or planks if you want and just build them straight up. It's a very, very narrow target. If you are moving, especially at a fast speed, it's going to be extremely difficult for the Pyre launcher to keep tracking that moving target that's so thin and just going back and forth and back and forth. That's going to, you know, that might throw it off by a little bit, to say the least. And you have a chance of actually dodging it then. Wow, if I was using this vehicle, I could swerve back and forth all I wanted. That Pyre launcher is going to hit me because it can track me fast enough. But if I was a very tiny target about the width of, like, I don't know, the, I, I don't even know what to compare it to, the width of the bumper there in the back, yeah, then I could probably do it, because, you know, it's tiny, but also having speed is a really good thing, uh, what I mean by that is you can't outrun fiery launchers, but however, if you're fast enough, you're able to get behind cover, they're not exactly, like, overly fast. I don't consider them to be overpowered, like, fast-wise. I just consider them overpowered because of their insane tracking abilities. Like, there's, if you don't get behind cover and you don't have a turret, uh, drone, or a, like, tower build, you're getting hit by that Pyre launcher. There's nothing you can do. And if I was, like, right here and a Pyre launcher got launched at me from back there, I'd be getting hit by it because there's no way I could get the cover in time. Like there's literally just, you're done. There's no way to dodge it uh, other than cover. So yeah, you're just, you just have to accept the fact that you're getting hit by a Pyre launcher, which is very annoying. Uh, I personally can't wait for them to change it. If you didn't know, the change that they're going to be making for Pyre launchers is that they're going to be changing the energy they require. They're going to make it require a far more amount of energy than what it currently does because, well, I think even the developers realize this is ridiculous. There's, there should be no reason that this weapon caught, like seriously, a Pyre launcher takes less energy than a medium machine gun. 
<laughs> How does that make any sense? Like, really? Uh, but, yeah, so pretty much you could put more Pyre launchers on a vehicle than I could put medium machine guns on this vehicle. And who do you think is going to get more kills? The guy with four Pyre launchers or the guy with three medium machine guns? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, overall, I would just generally try and uh, stay in cover because in this game you'd be surprised how much just using cover actually helps it's a lot like war thunder in that sense where you, you may have a very armored vehicle but that doesn't mean that you should just go ahead and take that vehicle out into anything and expect it to be okay you still need to use cover you don't want to go out in the open you should definitely be trying to like watch your back too because having a rammer come up from behind you is really bad. Use the counter resistant parts on the front and back like see how I have bumpers on the back, melee and a ram uh, plow on the front. That way you know if someone rams me from the front or back I'm going to take a lot really reduced damage from it. And uh, as far as any of the other stuff really goes I would, I would just recommend you know doing a lot of PvP, PvE, that way you get all your uh, all your rewards and you're able to keep going and progressing and things like that. Uh, but overall, I'm just going to kind of finish off this game then because, you know, I've been I've been doing this defense raid for a while now and I might as well just finish it before I uh, wrap up the video. So, yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions about fiery launchers or anything like that, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I reply to every comment I get because, you know, I like helping people out. So, yeah, just uh, go ahead and let me know if you need anything. Um, also, if you have any questions about the next upcoming patch, you will actually be able or will be released later this week or as I was talking to Viper in the chat earlier today and he just said soon and with a winky face. I don't know what that means. I'm hoping it means like tomorrow, because tomorrow's a Tuesday, that's when most video game companies release their shit. So I'm just hoping, you know, soon is tomorrow, which would be awesome. I really love that patch to get implemented, because, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun to play. It's going to be adding spare parts and fixing the repair mechanic. Actually, if you look in the bottom left right now, you can see Viper's still on. See? Haha, -ha, I'm not fucking lying. But, uh, yep, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy, and, uh... I hope you watch some of my other videos and you like and subscribe to this one up. So, see you in the next one guys. Peace out.